Suplifters. Today I kind of screwed up recording, so I'm doing this extra audio, which will be at the beginning. So we'll see me start again as if I were just starting recording. You will hear another Suplifters later on. So it's just me. I kind of screwed up recording. Anyway, um, today I tried to show you my whole routine before uh, uh, squatting, so my whole warm up, and it's basically inspired to what the Chinese weightlifting team does, and I will talk more about it later. They do a lot of stuff like behind the neck presses, behind the neck pull ups, and stuff like that because they need to have good shoulder mobility for their snatches. However, I need it for my back squat, and that was the way I'm copying it, it. And then what they do is that they use weights in order to force themselves into better positions just like I'm trying to do here. However, the weight was light and I didn't really want to feel like basically forcing myself into a position like that. Anyway, I will describe everything else later. So soon enough, you will hear me start over again with another microphone. Here I just do, did my classic psoas curl. And moving on. Sublifters. Today I want to show you what I did for this leg session. Since today I decided I wanted to go back at squatting since last week, literally one week ago, I said, okay, no more squatting until next Thursday. Today is Thursday, so the block came off and I could squat it. So what I did was I basically tried to emulate what the Chinese weightlifters do for their mobility because they have insane mobility. And of course, I don't really pretend to just be able to do what they do in like one single day. However, I wanna run you through what I did for my warm up, which as you can see, I recorded all in a single setting and it's really sped up. So this is a bended joint mobilization for the talus bone in the ankle, which usually stops from allowing the tibia to slide forward and I did both for the left and the right one. However, I'm not sure how much that will work. I'm gonna be honest, uh, the more I squat, the more I realize how much ankle mobility is important and how sad I am that I have got pretty much none of it. <laughs> um, they really are a couple of blocks of cement. And what I do is I, I basically cheer it out with my shoes. However, the Chinese also do have this type of shoes and they are also quite tall. I Google them around, they use, they are called Anta, A-N-T-A, and those are the shoes that they use, and they have a two centimeters heel. So we are pretty much using the same heel, however, their ankle mobility is still far, far superior. I really feel like the problem for me isn't exactly the mobility per se, but it's the fact that the lower I go with my hips, the more the knee kind of gets pulled back. So it's almost as if my quads or my hamstrings but i wouldn't really think they are the hamstrings it's maybe it's the quads actually because they attach both to the hip bone and to my knee so the lower the hip goes the more the quads pull the knee backwards so perhaps i might have found something so um, then i did some ankle mobility here these are just static stretching for the soleus and the gastrocnemius i think it's called which are the two muscles of uh, of your calves and uh, basically what, what another thing that I noticed in Olympic weightlifters uh, is the amount of behind the neck stuff that they do because as you know I also have some type of problems keeping the bar straight right on my back and so they do this stretch and a lot of others they also do pull-ups behind the neck overhead presses behind the neck because they allow you to really work your muscles through the full range of motion and I really feel like that I can get a lot of value from that so I will start doing them of course I'm not gonna uh, just replace my pull-ups completely or just start overhead pressing behind the neck for no reasons I'm gonna do it slowly however you can see that the majority of the movement that they do like these low raises they all run through the full range of motion that they need and this is why I really feel like that coping what these guys are doing can help me a lot both regarding the bar placement since as you can see it is not fixed yet however um, later on you will find that the position slightly improves I feel like I am better off holding a closer grip and focusing on pulling my left hand as back as I can because it will even out with the right one However, I really, I really noticed that every time I do a leg session, I end up squatting a lot with not a lot of weight, which is fine since, as you know, I haven't really trained leg decently in at least three weeks. So this was the first decent 
session. It's not a good session. It's just decent. My ideal leg day would be a heavy squat, back squat, then RDLs, then a front squat, uh, hip thrust, and then leg extension or leg curls. Maybe not even those, just, just those four movements. However, I still can't do that. And what I found really interesting today is that the back squat for me is way harder than the front squat, which is weird. I really feel like it's weird. And also I keep playing around with low and high bar. So what I'm trying to get from the Chinese weightlifters is their mobility and what they do to allow their body to excel in that regard. Because when I compare my form against theirs, even when they back squat, they have a torso really, really extremely uh, straight. They don't really bend over. They stand extremely tall, like as if they were front squatting. What I don't really get, however, is how do they manage to keep the weight right over the, their feet? Because, of course, I, I don't have the, their mobility, which is clear, and I'm trying to improve it. However, when I see those positions, I always feel like that they might just fall back. However, they are perfectly balanced. And it kind of makes sense because they have the bar which is aligned with their shoulders and then their feet and they have their knees extremely far forward because they have an amazing mobility. And so I kind of thought about it the more I squatted because right now I was just warming up and you will see that my main movements for today were just front squats. And what I did after was I basically just squatted body weight and I tried to see if my body actually allows my knees to travel forward where I don't really have any type of weight on my back. And guess what? I found out that it does not. But we will talk about that later. Right now, there isn't really too much to say, you know. I'm just squatting. However, the bar, you know, it's, it is a little bit straighter. Um, although it still tends to go a little bit down on the left one. But, you know, I'm working on it. There is still my hip shift, I still tend to prefer to prefer my right leg over the left one. So you see, if you will look me from the side, you can see that, yeah, my knees actually do travel forward, but my torso still inclines towards the front. It doesn't really stand extremely up, up straight, um, which is kind of normal, I believe. However, I, really, I never really feel balanced. I always have to readjust. And I found a couple of interesting stuff later on. Uh, one of which is that I actually prefer a strict stance because it gives me less pain in my right hip. Then, moving on regarding my pains. As I told you last week, I have some kind of pain in my left quadricep and today I had none of it. I could have squatted normally. I did a decent front squat session. The weight wasn't even too bad considering it was a front squat and not a back squat was 50 kilograms. I mean, it's decent for me, you know, <laughs> it's really baby weight. I mean, it's crazy that I can bench more than what I can actually squat. However, um, this that was really, really interesting. And the other interesting thing that I found out is that my, um, yeah, that my right hip still hurts when I use a wider stance, which I believe is because I tend to go towards the right, so I end up overloading that hip. So if I hold a stricter stance, which you will notice, because this was a warming up from the front squat, which is still decently large, but you will see that uh, during the third and fourth, or maybe even the second set, you will see that my stance is stricter. And having my feet closer together really doesn't allow my body to shift too much towards the right because there is already a reduced range of motion. So the wider I am, the more my body can go towards the right. However, if I kind of uh, narrow up the, the path, my body cannot really go too much left to right. And this allowed me to basically not have any type of pain, which was pretty interesting. Um, the only thing that I need to remember is that I need to keep my feet slightly facing outward. I also noticed that um, I had no problems front squatting, holding the bar with just two fingers. So three kind of still hurts, two fingers was okay. I mean, my wrists were still kind of tight. However, it was doable. I mean, it didn't hurt so much. In fact, you will see that the left side kind of ended up slipping at the end of it. And I think this is the last rep and you will see, yeah, how it's gonna slip in 
really, really short time, which is why I said, okay, no, 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 I can't have none of this. Yeah, I didn't show that I re-racked it, however it kind of felt. So, you know, I went back to just my hands and I had no problems. And as you can see, my feet are closer together. They aren't perfectly even because it's kind of hard to watch down when you have the bar on your throat. However, um, this was pretty interesting to find to me. This was very, very interesting because you can still see that my form is kind of shaky. I'm not extremely stable. But I would really, really have loved to rec have recorded myself from the front as well. Because the back sh shows a bit, but the front shows something else in my opinion. So I would still have needed to record both sides, so next time I will definitely do that. The other thing that you can notice is um, that I am going to that, and I have no problems going to that. You can see that the bar almost ends up resting on the pins. So I'm really happy with the depth that I'm getting uh, slowly, since it definitely improved since the first times that I squatted again. Anything else that I need to say is that my thoracic extension I feel like is good. So the thought that I had before, the one about quadriceps kind of pulling my knee backwards could make sense, and perhaps it is something that I need to work on, so I would look for something to do for those. Anyway, moving on from front squats, I did some hip thrusts, they went well. Today I felt like my ass was actually working, since last time I had no downs the day after in my ass, so maybe I was going too light. And this really speaks a lot about how much the glutes are involved in RDLs, because I didn't really hip thrust for a lot of time, and all I did were just Romanian deadlifts, and I basically improved on this exercise without even never having to train it which is kind of crazy and again I really feel like RDLs are the main movement however for the glutes and the hamstrings however I didn't do them today because today like not today um, Saturday so from so the, next, the, the day after tomorrow basically I mean, will deadlift so I really wanted to be kind of fresh in order to see if I can actually deadlift without any type of pain on my right hip I feel like my lockout has improved and the these hip thrusts really allow you to learn how to push with your glutes because if you think about it this kind of hip extension is what happens at the end of a deadlift and since I'm really working on having a clear lockout on my sumo deadlift so having my legs completely extended as well as having my glutes completely contracted at the top Doing this movement really allows me to kind of understand the feeling that I need to get at the top of the um, deadlift. Also, as I told you, RDLs always give me crazy dumps, um, so that's why I avoided them, since in two days I want to deadlift and I want to be as fresh as possible. However, I still think that they are better for your ass and your glutes in general, as well as being more quote-unquote functional. Moving on, um, you will see that I tried to do some back squats with lighter weight since I was already kind of cooked, I felt like. I even, I, 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 mean, I kind of failed on purpose, you will see that I will just f fall down at the end. And I also didn't hold the bar with my hands, I used the straps. However, you can still f see how I ended up like twisting my torso towards the left. Which I feel like, yeah, my hand is helping. However, I feel like that if I end up bringing my hips down towards the right, I feel like my left side of the body tends to twist in order to do that. So yeah, here I kind of failed on purpose. I didn't exactly fail. I just decided to go down with it because I wasn't feeling good. So I tried to holding it with my hands this time. And I tried to let my torso kind of go forward more because my thought when I was back squatting in the last set was I, I want to keep my torso as upright as possible. This time I allowed myself to go a little bit more uh, forward and leaning towards the wall, still making sure that I, I was not good morning in the weight. So I reduced it again and I just wanted to keep the bar as straight as possible because I felt like my legs were cooked. Because if you don't train a body part, I mean, uh, I have a good recovery and strength on the upper body because it's what I always, I've always trained. But my legs have never really gotten like three, four months of clear, solid training, you know. It's always been like two weeks on, two weeks off. 
So I've never really conditioned them and that is why they really reverted fast back to square one. On the other hand, I know that I will progress fast. So I still decided to avoid pushing myself and I just tried to focus myself on the form and keeping the bar straight. Even though there is still the hip shift. So this is the experiment that I talked about before. If you see me go down, look at how much my knees get pulled back. Like here I can sit down, however, my knees still get brought back whenever I go down with my hips. You can clearly see that. Right now I'm, I'm keeping my... Um, I'm keeping my, I'm staying on the balls of my feet, you know, I'm not keeping the talus bone down. So my feet wasn't flat on the ground. So it really shows me that there is something that it's pulling my, basically my, not my hips forward, but my knees backwards because they are the lighter structure. And I feel like it might be the quads. So I'm going to look what can I do for my quads and perhaps I will have some more luck with it. Then I did just classic leg curls and then some uh, leg extensions always always the same at the end of it as, as usual as usual i will put the picture of my training so you can see how many sets how much weight and everything else however you know the weight is already wrote down here you will see however how many sets and reps i did so overall i'm i'm i don't want to say that i'm happy because i'm of course i'm not happy however i also realized that i cannot expect to basically overcome what my body has broken down into in 21 years of life and hope to revert it in just one week. As I said in another video, I'm kind of scared that I will need a really, 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 really long time to actually get a decent mobility, if I will ever actually get it, because you never know. However, the only thing I can do is keep doing this stuff, keep uh, tracking every type of improvement that I'm doing, and simply have faith and trusting the process you know you can't really do anything else however i'm happy that i can front squat you know so we'll make the best that we can do with what i can do <laughs> that is it for today's video see you guys tomorrow